there's a few different techniques to looking at individual hosts for at, to looking at subnets to looking at different devices and i think the best way to explain this is to actually show you how this happens how this works so now i'm over here on a windows 7 computer that's joined to a network and hasn't really gotten any password information it's not really participating in security with anything else it's just kind of here and I wanted to show you some basics on how to actually start scanning this network. Now, typically, the first thing I'm going to want to do is identify what TCP IP settings are going on here. So ipconfig slash all will tell me a lot of information about it. Uh, for sake of simplicity, I've actually stayed here with an, a static IP address, but you can see uh, typically a dynamic IP address, the DHCP server, uh, subnet mask, default gateway, and so forth. This gives us an idea of the IP address range. If not, all we would really need to do would be scan, uh, do a little bit of network sniffing, wait around for a few moments, find a few different IP address uh, addresses that are valid on the network, and simply feed those in to either spoof an IP address or come up with a valid one that we could use. So not really a barrier having static versus dynamic. It just creates a little bit of extra work. But you can see here that I've got a, a subnet of 192.168, one dot something. That's where my host is, and that's probably where most of the other hosts are going to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a look around on that network for what other hosts might be out there. Now, rather than doing kind of a linear ping sweep, some folks, some attackers actually will come in and use built-in Windows functionality. For example, the network list, the, the actual network hosts. And so I've brought that up here, and this can be viewed either as a net, network map or as a list of hosts that are out there. But this list is fairly limited. This list is somewhat limited or fairly limited to what Windows expects to see and what Windows is configured to look at. So hosts that have nothing to do with Windows and nothing to offer Windows, not very usable to a typical user, not very useful to Microsoft, so they don't show up here. So this may be a good starting point just to click on Start Computer and then actually click on the Network tab. That's interesting. It gives me a good first glance. It's not going to give me a lot of information that I'm looking for, though. Typically, what I'm going to do is find the IP address and run a tool. I've chosen one, one of my favorites actually, Advanced IP Scanner, which is going to scan all of the IP addresses in this range, but it does it in a little bit more of a slow, methodical, and configurable way. And that's what this looks like. I've taken the liberty of doing this in advance because I actually do have it run pretty slow, and it would take quite a while to finish in this, in this video. But you can see it's actually enumerated a bunch of different systems, a bunch of different hosts that are responsive, some of which are not Windows hosts, some of which have nothing to do with Windows and nothing to offer Windows, but they are still valid hosts. And Advanced IP Scanner goes a little bit beyond the typical kind of ping sweep and, and just pinging IP addresses because it starts to give us inf inser interesting information about the hosts out there. For example, if I open the Zippy, uh, host, I can see some basic information like it's got an IPC dollar share. IPC dollar, as you'll find out in later videos, means that it will accept possibly anonymous connections or connectionless sessions. And those are great things to have. It's great to know which systems are, are enumer or are allowing that to happen. So having this list is certainly step one. And I take this, I save it out, I either screenshot it or I copy and paste it, get it out of here, get it back to my attack machine so that I can actually uh, use that later. I, I want to keep the IP addresses. I want to keep the MAC addresses that are right here. Uh, in some cases, I'm going to get usernames. It's typically going to be older systems that are going to give me that for the currently logged in user. But if I get it, that's fantastic. If I don't get it, oh, oh okay, I can still deal with that. Uh, one pro tip to remember is if you don't like writing stuff down and you don't like shoveling stuff back out with copy and paste, either take screenshots and copy the screenshots out 
or I actually strongly recommend you do a screen capture, kind of a video capture. I use Camtasia. A lot of people use different tools. Uh, just depends on what you're comfortable with. But that way, you know, you get everything. And in fact, you can talk over it, take notes, verbal notes as you're doing this attack. So once I've got, and I'm going to go ahead and clear some of this background stuff, once I've got a fairly good idea of what's going on on the network, I can either use uh, command line tools or interface tools to start digging into the IP addresses or the hosts that I found. There are plenty of, of command line tools like NetView, NBT Stat, ARP. Those are, those are some faves to start identifying systems. But personally, I prefer interface tools. So this one, Advanced Port Sister, our scanner is a sister product to Advanced IP Scanner. And that's what this looks like right here. And you can see that for each of the hosts it found, it actually did a bit of, of a closer examination of what's going on on these hosts. So for example, this secret server, 192.168.1.6, .1 I can see which ports were open, 139, 135, and 445. And when I'm footprinting systems, I know that these are Microsoft typical ports. So I know this is probably a Microsoft operating system running here. I can see different ports on different systems. So for example, this one has, ooh, Telnet, ooh, HTTP. It thinks it's a web server, but it's also got the printer port open, network printing. This is fantastic. This is a lovely find because Telnet is a fun attack. HTTP tells me I can just web browse over there and take a look around. And printer, potentially, I, I know the role of it. May be interesting, maybe not. May have old cache print files, may not. Gives me a lot of interesting information, but again, without attacking the system. This goes into my footprint, into my nefarious network map, so I know potentially what to attack next. And finally, I kind of saved the best for last in this list because I can look through all of these all day long. But 1.16, I happen to know already, is a domain controller. And so I can see port 88 indicating Kerberos authentication is, is possible. Uh, domain port. So I know that this one is probably a Microsoft domain controller, of uh, uh, some type of domain controller. What version, I don't quite know yet. But I'm not going to stop there. I sure as heck want to know a little bit more about all of these systems, certainly about 1.16, because it may be a domain controller. It may not, but I'm going to find out in a moment. I think the next step I typically use is going to be, hold on, is going to be the NetBIOS enumerator. So another tool, another fun tool that I like to use, and it gives me a little bit more information about the NetBIOS services that a system might provide. So I come down here and pop that open. NetBIOS Enumerator does the same kind of IP address range check, but it doesn't just look for live hosts or dead hosts. It actually looks for information within those. And so I know that 1.16 from my other window right here is a system of interest. It's something I'm starting to look into because it sounds like it might be a prime target for me. So I'll take a look at 1.16. I could certainly change the address range to just scan it. But I'm going to take a look and find out that I can't get a logon name yet, but I now know that it's part of a domain, and the domain name is demonstration. Fantastic. Write that down really, really quickly. Make sure and save that. And I also know, wow, this is, again, without any kind of username, password, anything like that, I know the domain name, and I know that this thing is a domain controller for that domain. I also know it's the domain master browser and then it's got a file server on it. That is absolutely gold. I now know that I can mess around with domain browsing or master browsing roles if I want to. It's not that exciting, but I could potentially conduct some attacks there. And I know that this is a domain controller and I know which domain it's for. Awesome. This is stuff I'm going to absolutely need later when I'm conducting attacks against domain controllers or when I'm prioritizing my targets. And then finally, one more tool that I typically use when I'm doing this kind of enumeration and scanning, I'm going to go ahead and minimize these a little bit, is you may have noticed there's one system in here that's a little bit very, a little bit on the tempting side. Well, there's a, uh, a machine called Secret Server. And what I've done is I've used a more detailed tool here called WinFingerprint, 
when fingerprint looks in some detail at just one machine, hopefully, because if you start using this too broadly, it's actually going to be a little bit of a mess. It's going to cause some traffic. And here it's a closer scrutiny of secret server itself. So I know the IP address and the machine name. Great. I know which work group it's in or domain it's in. Great. I know what, uh, what the SID is. Fantastic. I've checked the date and time. Date and time may seem innocuous, but if the date and time is very far off from my scan, that could be a major problem for them, for, for the defender, because the system is not being maintained. As an attacker, I love seeing systems out of sync. It means I probably can attack them. They're probably not being watched. They're not really, they don't have people logging into them. They probably don't have very current patches. And speaking of patches, I now know what operating system this, is, this system is running. Uh, operating system Windows NT 5.1, which is Windows XP. I know which services it's running. I know which shares it's running. Again, this is without actually opening up the shares or starting to touch any of the files. I can see the services that are running and I can see the RPC binding. So I know a lot of information about the connectivity that I can get to Secret Share. Is Secret Share a target of interest? Target of opportunity? It may be. It may not be. This may be a honeypot. This may be just a, a little bit too tempting of a target, or it may be a great target for later attack. But this kind of probing, I want to emphasize, is really only useful on individual hosts, because if you start scanning the entire network looking for this level of detail on all systems, it's going to take quite a while, and you're probably going to set off a lot of alarm bells, and then you're going to get to a point where that connection is going to get shut down or someone comes looking for you. So these kinds of probes are absolutely critical to looking at the big picture, finding out what is out there, and then narrowing the search to determine exactly what's going on on each individual system, which all feeds back into our nefarious network map and our catalog of systems and helps us prioritize what we're going to attack next. So hopefully that was kind of interesting and revealing as far as the information you can get out of a network using a few simple tools, and there's a myriad of tools available to you, and a little bit of time without really any other knowledge, without any other pre-information like usernames, passwords, anything like that. And as a reminder, the output of all of that is to identify which systems to attack, helps prioritize those systems of the systems to attack, which systems to attack first, and where we can actually provide some software leverage or some type of, of opportunity to get back into the network and hide our tracks so that future attacks are quicker, easier, more efficient, and likely much more successful.